Opening a canvas to access the canvas menu, the first item we see is gallery, and as expected, that selection takes us back to the gallery. This little wrench is the actions menu, and in this first add selection, the first three items are fully explained in this two-part video. We'll take this add text selection on in this video, and we'll take this grouping on in this video. Moving over to the right, crop and resize is the first menu item in the canvas section. Canvas presets determine the initial dimensions and resolution of a newly opened canvas, but that can be changed in here at any time using the crop and resize settings. You're going to be seeing these three items in a few exercises. The reference toggle allows you to call up an image from which to draw. And that window can be moved around by selecting the bar. You can resize it. And then you can pinch and zoom and rotate the reference image itself. When you close the reference image and then close that file, when you pick up where you left off and reopen that file to work, that particular canvas is going to remember the reference image that you targeted. And then the remaining items in this canvas are rather self-explanatory. If you recall in the gallery menu video, we already saw these same share options in the gallery select mode menu. And if you recall, in the select mode menu, these options can be applied to multiple canvases. And here in this actions share menu, these options can only be applied to the canvas that's currently open. And again, these share options are explained in full in these two handouts. From start to finish, you have the option of recording every brushstroke made while rendering your artwork. As you close and reopen your canvas between sessions, time-lapse recording will pick up where you left off. Time-lapse recording is toggled on by default, and sharing lifetime sketches on social media is a real attention grabber, but know that this feature can bog down performance when working on larger file sizes. So if you're trying to produce a high-end artwork for print, leave it on to start, and then consider toggling it off if things get too sluggish. If you'd like a high quality recording, you would set that up in the canvas preset before creating a canvas, because once a canvas is created, its recording quality cannot be altered. And do note that this on-off toggle will only apply to the canvas that you currently have open. Refer to this handout and set your preferences as indicated. Not only does it clearly explain, it also includes links to very informative Procreate videos. Please do sync up these preferences so we can work together in unison. Once you get your bearings, you can feel free to set them any way you wish. For a beautifully explained rundown of all things Procreate, please refer to their handbook as well as their YouTube library. You can see the link to the handbook here. And then the Learn to Procreate selection takes you to YouTube. Moving on to the Adjustments menu options, key adjustments will be an integral part of the course exercises. But again, learn all about them by referring to the help resources just mentioned. The Procreate YouTube channel has explainer videos for all that you see in here. In wrapping up the left side of the gallery menu, the Select and Transform tools are often used in tandem and will be part of just about every exercise we do. You will soon know these two menu items all too well. Moving to the right, brushes are essentially the heart and soul of Procreate, and they're discussed ad nauseum in the Brushes and Brush Studio video. The smudge and eraser tools are pretty much tag-alongs to the brush, so they'll be an integral part of the Brushes and Brush Studio video. Effective use of layers is as important as your choice of brushes, and so different layer features, modes, and functionalities will be an integral part of each exercise as well. The color palette is very intuitive, and the Procreate YouTube videos clearly explain. But here are a few highlights. You can do a color drop by press dragging the color onto the canvas.
And if you tap the color menu item and look at the top right corner, these two color wells are your primary and secondary colors. You can toggle between these two colors by long pressing. Note that if you want to fix a color to one of these wells, you need to immediately make a brush mark with that new color selection. This takes a bit of getting used to, quite honestly. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to choose the primary color well, which is the blue, and I'm going to select this lime green down here. So having done that, I haven't made any marks, so now when I come back and long press, and open it back up, you can see the jump back to the orange. This precarious behavior with these color wells takes a bit of getting used to, but you can apply some pretty cool color dynamics to brushes. So I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to scrub and clear away a little sun and sky graphic, and I'm going to choose this soft pastel brush, which to show you, I have set the color dynamics. So Based on the pressure, I can switch back and forth between primary and secondary colors. So have that and let's get a different color scheme going here. I'm going to choose this lime green and I'm just going to, again, these color wells take some getting used to. Okay, I'm going to scrub again to clear this away. Now when I use pressure, light pressure, and then I press down, you can see how I can go between these two colors. Now that's just one dynamic. You can also set pencil tilt and whatnot, but you can get some pretty interesting effects. So that's light, and then I'm pressing hard for the dark green. So kind of cool to know about. Getting back to our color palette here. Not many people know that you can pinch out on this inner circle if you wanted to focus on the hue and then pinch back in again when you wanted to get back to the ring. And for me personally, when I'm trying to get a pure black or a pure white, the classic palette is so much easier to just drag the selector into the upper or lower corner and you know you've got a 100% white or black. There's a way to tap on the circle, but for me personally, I find this to be less work. And if you're feeling a bit iffy about your color theory, the Procreate handbook and videos have all the information you need about these different color harmonies, which are pretty cool. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel here. There's quite a bit of information out there right at your fingertips, if you recall. In the value palette, you have the option of using sliders for absolute control over your color selections. And in the import and insert videos, we'll be covering all the items in this menu. And so that ends our general tour of the gallery and canvas menus. Please do be sure to check out all the materials that were referenced in these videos. I think you'll find them all to be pretty user-friendly and explanatory. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on Zoom.